This year, Rockstar Games promises to take you on an adventure through the best looking version of the Wild West you've ever seen in a little game called Red Dead Redemption 2. Before that happens, I want to introduce you to a decidedly more stripped down version of the Wild West that trades 4K graphics for stick figures and humor. But don't be fooled by West of Loathing's simplistic look, because Arthur Morgan and the Vanderlyn gang will have their work cut out for them if they hope to top this must-own western. It's the 1800s, and the call to head west is proving too strong for some. You play one of several unique characters who decides to leave everything behind with dreams of starting a new life filled with freedom and prosperity. In my case, I went with Victoria, a strong gunfighter with a penchant for punching cows. She's eager to travel across the country to the west coast, not realizing just how many obstacles will stand in the way of the Pacific Ocean. West of Loathing is an endlessly charming role-playing game where the idea is to take on quests in order to figure out how to get to the west coast. This involves a lot of riding around and discovering new settlements, mines, forts, graveyards, and small towns, each with their own mysteries and puzzles to solve. It won't take long before you're bouncing between dozens of these simple locations and getting into dangerous gunfights with gangs, skeletons, and yes, even cows. The combat is turn-based, though probably not as complicated as those Japanese role-playing games you're probably picturing in your head right now. We have a melee weapon and a gun along with a handful of special moves you can learn from reading different books. You'll also have a partner with you who's good at both keeping track of quests and shooting at enemies. The battles are often short and straightforward, and you'll rarely get into a situation where you'll be surprised by a random attack. But the reason this game worked for me has almost nothing to do with the combat, as the real star here has to be the writing. This is the kind of game where we're constantly getting ourselves into silly situations, and the gags are coming at a rapid pace. For example, there's a bit where we have to go to a literal ghost town, complete with buildings that you can barely see and a bunch of cranky citizens. This is already a funny concept, but the writing pushes it over the top when it quickly turns into a commentary on the complicated inner workings of government bureaucracy. Every mission and character finds a way to tweak both the western cliches and the modern world, always in ways that never feel forced or lame. This is easily one of the funniest games I've ever played. And it's more than that, because West of Loathing is also an expertly designed game from beginning to end. Between the large map and the overwhelming amount of quests, this is the type of game that could just as easily have been a slog full of mindless backtracking and random battles. But the developers have made a lot of smart interface decisions that speed up the action and make this a genuine joy to play. It's in both the subtle and obvious ways, like how you don't have to grind for levels, how you can teleport around the map no matter where you're standing, and how you can control pretty much everything using the Switch's touchscreen. West of Loathing is also good about not overstaying its welcome, all while simultaneously offering an almost overwhelming amount of content. What really stood out to me was how it felt like it was never repeating the same trick over and over. There's an incredible variety of puzzles and colorful characters to meet, and every time you think you've run out of funny gags, the game tosses another five at you. It always seems like you're discovering new locations or uncovering a new mystery and yet the narrative isn't muddled or aimless. The game manages to walk the line between being uproariously funny and also being a compelling western. While I'm sure there will be gamers who are turned off by the simple stick figures and penciled in look, I found every second of West of Loathing to be delightful. Sure, it's not exactly the flashiest game you'll play this year, but everything in this Wild West world is bursting with personality. I especially like some of the supernatural enemy designs and how playful they get with the different points of interest on the map. The whole thing is charming in a way that I wasn't expecting, and it's just one of the reasons why West of Loathing is one of the best games I've played this year. I implore you, do not sleep on this game. West of Loathing is not some stripped-down adventure game, it's a masterclass in how to write and construct an irresistibly original Wild West RPG. This game is funny, charming, inventive, and, best of all, expertly designed. I had a giant grin on my face throughout the entire playthrough, and there's not much about this that I would change. West of Loathing is easily one of the best games on the Switch. Hey, thanks for watching our review. So here's the question of the day. What's your favorite Wild West video game? 
and a lot of people are probably gonna say Red Dead Redemption because it's great, but don't forget about Gunsmoke and Dark Watch. There have been a bunch over the years, so let me hear your picks in the comments below. In other news, I'm currently hard at work on a brand new episode of Electronic Gaming Monthly's Best and Worst. Look for episodes to resume next Wednesday and run throughout the summer. We also have a bunch of reviews coming shortly, so I strongly recommend you click that subscribe button and support what we're doing here. Until then.